evening. Hey everybody, how are you? Good evening. It is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. Linda's always next to me when we're doing these Q and A's. And it's Monday. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, we're doing a special uh, Christmas Eve Q and A. If you don't know who I am, again, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training. Um, I've got a training facility up in Providence, Rhode Island, and we specialize in aggression rehab and behavior modification. So we deal with a lot of um, a lot of uh, really really bad behaviors, but obviously we also do puppy stuff. And you know, just about any 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 behavior there is um, that you're struggling with your dog. Uh, you're going to hear me talk a lot about punishment on this. Um, the reason why you're going to hear me talk about punishment is because this is last week's. Um, the reason why you're going to hear me talk about punishment is because nobody talks about punishments. Obviously, when we want a dog to do something, we absolutely always um, reward the dog. But in order to stop an unwanted behavior you have to do punishment. And punishment has gotten a bad rap. A lot of people compare punishment to abuse, and it's nothing like that. And I'm saying that now because I sort of like segue into all my shows um, like that because um, uh, we get a lot of new fans every single week. Um, so it's really, really important. Um, we'll just do our best on that. All right, so ask your questions, and we'll jump right into it. I'm not. All right. I'm not logged in properly. Um, Comments are not. Nope, you're right. Okay. Let's see. Let's. Okay. Nope. We'll do that right there. Okay. So, hope everybody had a great Christmas and hopefully everybody was safe with all their dogs. It's really, really important that um, folks are, are safe because a lot of times this is a really popular time for dogs to um, bite people. We see that all the time during the holidays and um, it's not necessary. It doesn't have to happen. All right. So, what do we got? Uh, your dog's still a little reactive, um, pop and buzz harder. If your dogs are being reactive on the leash, the number one reason why dogs are, are being reactive on the leash is usually bad timing. So if you're using the right tools, we're a big fan of prong collars, big fan of remote collars. A lot of times what happens is people are waiting too too long before they give the information to the dog. And the reason what I mean what I mean by information is yes, a leash a leash correction. Um, GSD is very reactive toward cat, cat torments dog while it's in crate. So what I would do is I would actually correct your, um, I would correct your cat. I would let your, I would let your cat know that's not how to do that. A bonker is a great thing. If you don't know what a bonker is, all it is is a wrapped up towel. You wrap it up, there's nothing in between it, and you would just throw it at the cat. Sounds mean, but it's not. I mean, cats will torment dogs all the time. And um, just like you don't want your dog tormenting your cat, you don't want your cat tormenting your dog. So you want to make sure that everybody can live um, harmoniously in the house. Um, and, you know, ideally, if your dog was out of the crate, it would, it would just go, burp, and your cat would run away. So next. Dog knows place well, but recently sometimes is whining while on place. Remote has made him whine more. Okay, oh, so this is it. Remember, whenever we want to stop something, we're going to use punishment. Whenever we want to get something, we're going to use a reward. Um, for whining, I find a whine um, uh, annoying. And I also, let's remember about choices. If a dog makes a choice at something, we can reward it for making a good choice and, and punish it for making a bad choice. So I think that that's really, really important. The, you might have to mess around with your levels on your remote. I don't know what level. There's no magic level. It will be the right level. And when I say to use the right level, I'm not trying to be snarky. What it is is find the right level. So what you want to do is you want to do, um, you know, you go up a little bit, you go down a little bit, you hit momentary, you hit continuous to you figure out the right recipe. Also, what you're doing is put lots of structure in your dog's life and other parts of um, the dog's life. So the way we train dogs, it's more of a, it's not a band-aid approach. It's more of like literally a lifestyle. Next. Thoughts on submissive holds at the vet versus learning with food during exam? Um, what, what I do is I have no problem at all with a, um, a vet tech, you know, putting the dog into a safe position um, in order to give the to, to give the exam. Most vet techs or good vet techs should be skilled and they do a nice little hold on the dog that keeps the dog's head stable so it can't bite anybody. Also, if you want to put, you know, um, uh, a muzzle on the dog, you can. If you want to lure, you can. Luring takes time though. Luring takes time. So if you want to, if you want to do it, a, um, a, a, a practice at a vet, vet practice at home, you can do that. Next. Pit targets men when they move their arms, growling, lunging, starting to do it with my dog. Okay, so it's the breed of the dog doesn't matter. Let's all remember that. I'm never going to give any breed specific advice because most dogs aren't, except for short snouted dogs in the summertime, um, you have to be careful. So the question is your dog is lunging at your friend, 
dogs lunging at, lunging at men. Yeah. So what I would do is we've got a clicker and food. We use the dog's daily food protocol that we do for that. And what it's going to be is you just have people approach, the dog is calm, you click in your reward. By the way, everything I say is a 30-minute answer, and I'm willing it down to 30 seconds. So then you just have people approach, the dog is calm, soft eye, soft body, click reward. Um, the big mistake everybody makes is they they when the dog is growling or lunging, they don't, then that's when they give the food. That's when they give the food. That's the wrong way to do it. That's how you would train a dog to growl and lunge. So I want you to do that. And then you start moving your hands, moving your hands, move your hands. But also let's make sure the dog knows the default down or default place. Next. Um, if I correct fence reactivity with e-collar, will they get collar smart for when I'm not home? Um, your dog should not be outside unattended. Next. One-year-old dog aggressively lunged at my brother at a party today. She's never shown this behavior. Okay, again, last week what I told everybody to do was put your dogs away. The worst thing to do with your dog, also on the on the, on the the fence fighting thing, put a bark towel on your dog so when you are away, the bark towel will go off when the dog barks. But also, I'm, I am not a big fan of leaving dogs unattended outside when nobody's home if you're struggling with behavior issues. Um, so as far as, um, what was the question about that? Oh, lunging. Last week, I was yelling and screaming from the rooftops, and I know this is not, I told you so, that's not what this is. I don't shame owners. Put your dogs away during holiday parties, please, okay? Put your dogs away. Absolutely put your dogs away. Why? Because of what's going on right now. It was too much stress on the dog. So um, yes, I use shock collars. Yes, I use shock collars. So educate yourself about my training. We also use food and clickers. So we're true dog trainers that use balance. And if you don't know enough about shock collars, you should investigate them because they're actually wonderful, wonderful tools. All right. So, you know, just look into them, look into them. But if you're on my show to troll, we're going to ban you anyway. So you might want to learn something. There's more to um, that question. It says food was involved the first time, but she did it again, even after we removed the bone. Exactly. So the worst thing to do is um, the worst thing, don't, Megan, don't worry about it. The worst thing to do is, is have food or a bone or around in a party. So the, what you do now is this. Don't have your dog around crowds of people in your house right now. Is that dog training? No, it's not. It absolutely will not. It will not fix the problem. It just will. You're going to have to go backwards now. You didn't mess up your dog. You'll be fine, Megan. Um, what you're going to do is 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 role play all this stuff. And you're going to role play all this stuff by having your dog in place or in down and then duplicate all that stuff with putting with noises and, and, and physical movement. It's so much pressure on a dog. Okay, it's so much pressure on a dog. All right, so you'll be fine, but it's all going to be done with clicker food, clicker food. Next. Uh, hello, mate. My two dogs. Hold on one second. So, so Larry, I suck, and you you train dogs without shock collars. Good for you. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. That's really fantastic that you do that, and you have aggression without shock collars. That's wonderful. Have your own periscope show. But let me just give everybody a little bit of a helpful hint. Professionals and nice people. Don't go on other people's Periscope shows and be a dick. They just don't do that. Nice people are not assholes on other people's Periscope shows. They're not. So congratulations for your dog training skills, but you're not a nice person. So score one for me. If you want to, like, keep score here, that's really cool. Also, I just did a quick Google search for you in the background, and you have no existence on the Internet. So good for you. Who cares? Next. Sorry, guys. Every once in a while, I, like, Love to just throw some stuff out there because. Let's keep going. Sorry. Go next. Next. Um, I'm stuck. Hold on. All right. Hello, mate. My two dogs keep fighting. Father and son. Any ideas? Yes. Lots of ideas. Number one, you're going to have to put, you're going to have to put an inhibitor in there. But right now, what I want you to do is make sure you're creating dogs separately. So all dogs should be in crates in your house. Lots of structure. Take away all the affection. Make sure all the dogs know at least basic animal, you know, basic commands, you know, like place and down and heel, keep control of their arousal. If all these dogs are getting aroused, if all these dogs are getting highly aroused, that's going to be your, um, um, uh, uh, that's going to be your enemy. That's going to be your enemy. Um, so what I want you to do is, and then you have to put an inhibitor in them. So we having aggressive dogs is not a periscope thing, but it's going to involve muzzles and a high punisher. Next. I used to walk a friend's dog who would never walk to my right. This stand is this standard training. Um, is this standard? You can you can you can do um, you can do the right or the left. You can do on the right or you can do on the left. Hey, Scotty, how are you? On the right or the left, it really doesn't matter. As far as the holiday party, please finish the answer. Is that the one where somebody lunged? Um, well, what you, you missed it. It's too late. You you missed it. So the answer the answer is 
you're going to put the dogs away during parties. I would never have my dogs out during a party. That doesn't make the owner bad. It's just like my information. And then what you're going to have to do is work on the dog's place command around high levels of distractions. So you start off by having a rock solid place and then you start adding layers of distractions. And, but, you know, do I want my dog to do a place command or a down sense, a, do, a, a down, dog sense training or a downstay around parties? I personally do not want. Nope, I wouldn't put my dog in that situation. So really, I'm not going to try to duplicate that. I'm not going to try to duplicate that. Next. Okay. Um, my dog keeps sitting on me. So um, if you don't want your dog to do it, push your dog off. Next. Um, let's see. Um, do you ever e-collar train board and train dogs without the owners taking an e-collar home? No, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make – guys, e-collars are for long periods of time because, remember, we're dog – okay, first let's clarify everything. I can train a dog with a shoestring and a treat bag. Big deal. I'm a dog trainer. Owners aren't dog trainers, and dog trainers are not magicians. Dog trainers are not magicians. So dog owners need as much leverage, okay? Dog owners need as much leverage as they can get. I deal with dogs that bite humans. I deal with dogs that get try to kill other dogs. We deal with dogs that are pushy, snotty, fearful, nervous, massive amounts of anxiety. They spend three to five weeks of their life with us. Owners need as much leverage as possible. I care so much about owners that I want to give them every single tool there is in my toolbox so they can be successful. So um, that's why owners get tools when they go home. They need they need help. Owners need help. I'm so pro-human that I want owners to have as much help as they can. Next. Struggling with walks, constantly trying to de-escalate arousal, but not helping. Inhale, but scans. So right from the beginning of the walk, Right at the beginning of the walk, people are going to struggle with this one. As soon as you walk out the door, boom, high level punisher. What does that look like? A bonker or a remote tower? High level. A lot of people are like, oh, that's mean. The dog really hasn't done anything. The dog's going to hate the walks. So let's break that down a little bit, okay? The owner hates the walks. That's all I care about is the owner hates the walks. The owner owns the dog. The owner's responsible for the dog. So if the owner hates the walks, the owner doesn't walk the dog anymore. Therefore, the dog doesn't go on walks. So my first priority is always owners. I'm a very owner-centric dog trainer. Okay? So at the very, very beginning, what happens is, what happens is um, you de-escalate the arousal right from the beginning. If you're trying to do it midway, it's like this. You're, you're, someone has a drinking problem, all right? Someone has a um, drinking problem, and they're in a bar. Like, don't talk to them about being sober. They're already in the bar. Next. Can I convert my one-dog e-collar to a two-dog collar, or do I have to buy a new one? You can. Yeah, it depends on how old it is. If it's one of the newer models, what you do is you call up the manufacturer. You're going to read the serial number on the back. They'll let you know. If you can do it, it's an easy process. Next. Um, I want her to be more social, and I just pushed her too soon. So discouraged. Thanks for the advice. Megan, first of all, let's forget about your dog being social. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Who really cares? Why? Why do you want your dog to be more social? By the way, I'm not mad and I'm not attacking you. Um, so this is, this is the thing, though. Who cares if your dog is social or not? As long as your dog is good with your immediate family, that's all that matters. Remember, don't like let's work with the dogs that we have in front of us, not with necessarily the dogs we want. It's a journey. You might get there. But to me, I will tell you, I'm a dog trainer and I have social dogs. If I have people over my house, when I have people over my house, my dogs get put away. They get put away. Why? I don't trust people. And they're also dogs. But people can do stupid stuff around dogs. Accidents can happen. Or what just happened happened. So what, ha you know, what happened happened. It's over. It's done with. But don't put your dog in that situation anymore. And that's not a failure of dog training. And it's not a failure of dog ownership. Next. Dog is in place, but kids want to pet it. What should I do? Party time at home. Thanks. No. Don't let kids pet your dog. Nope. Nope. Next. Dog is that's, that's, these are all my opinion based on 4,000 plus dogs that I've trained with owners who are struggling. Keep in mind, the amount of dogs that we have trained, me personally, as well as our company, the, the massive amounts of phone calls I get, so many emails I get, and so many times dogs are being put down. 
that they didn't have to be put down if we started having a different mindset. That's all. Next. You know, uh, I have an 84 pound Doberman. Yep. I bought him a Herm Springer 3.0. Yep. yep. Only thing it falls down, falls from weight. What so you you know what you can actually on an eighty four on a, on a Adobe so think about thinner neck first of all take out some of the links take out some of the links and make sure it's super snug you might be able to switch to a two point two five millimeter but you have to put um, extra links in it so you might actually have to end up buying two of them or buy extra links next dog is always past my leg and heel want him further back prong he vocalizes blows off mini educator so as far as blowing off the mini educator I don't know how high you're going teach the dog how to do a remote collar heel it's all with leash pressure and continuous button so it's leash pressure and continuous button and you'll start teaching the dog how to do a remote collar heel so it's not a pop anymore it's like rowboat it's like pressure on leash guidance back i think sean o'shea has a video on it thegooddog.net next i got nothing right now okay cool so time to ask time to ask your questions if i've got a bunch of seminars coming up if you go to rvdogtrainer.com rvdogtrainer.com you can see my seminars coming up um i've got one down in ellington florida coming up in january the second weekend in january february let's see i'm out in la and then march boom the tour starts again we've got baltimore which is really really um uh, uh baltimore which is really really great that's going to be a really good one um what else um, it was your hundred. Check the stormy. Check the the the, um, uh, the the tightness of it. So you can you can guide back. The remember the remote collar is not magic. The remote New York City. I'm going to be in Long Island, right by Queens. I'll be close enough. Also, I've got one in Providence, Rhode Island. New York City is Providence, Rhode Island is a three hour drive. A ton of people come to Providence. Also, Baltimore is close to you. But no venues in New York City right now. Find me a venue and I'll do it though. Absolutely, I'll do one in New York City. Um, but just remember, the remote collar is not a magic button. You still got to give that dog guidance. It doesn't know it's supposed to move back. The dog doesn't know if it's going to be supposed to move back. I did a periscope the other day um, um, uh, about like showing how remote collars and food don't actually train dogs. Next. Um, I'm not getting the questions for some reason. There you go. Oh, there. Yeah. Doing pre walk bonker, she's still freaked out by everything on the walk. Maybe keep practicing heel. So your dog is just. Your dog is really, really nervous. Yeah, um, yes, you can. Thank you for asking. Okay, Kira. Um, so what, what happens is your dog is still probably really, really nervous of environmentals. So that's a bigger process. That's not just about heel. So I know she's very, very nervous. So that's like what you need to do is we would use a lot of food, but not during the walk. We would get that dog used to environmentals inside. We would do a lot of um, uh, um, interior work with the dog. So interior work with the dog, um, getting the dog started, started used to a lot of environmentals, but absolutely, I want you to do a remote collar heel. Remote collar heel with that dog focusing more on the leg and up at you is going to block out all the env envi environmentals to the dog, to, I mean, yeah, environmentals that are outside to the dog. It's a process, though. It's a long process. Next. Um, trouble getting away. Oh, I think I skipped one. Can you increase speed of recall with e-collar or is that more a drive issue? Um, both. It's a drivey issue, but you could also, it's a motivation issue. It's a motivation issue. A lot of a lot of um, trainers, what they'll do is, as the dog is recalling, they'll start dialing up on the remote. So the quicker the dog gets to you, um, the um, uh, uh, the, re the remote shuts off. Some people will use higher value food, which I'm not against. Some people don't care about the food. So if you've got a dog that has no food drive and no toy drive, you got to figure out what to do. So a lot of people are like, no, just praise the dog. The dog doesn't care about praise. Give the dog yummy treats. The dog has no food drive. Give the dog a ball. The dog has no ball drive. So what do you have to do? Pressure. You got to use pressure. So use whatever motivates the dog. Usually a higher level stim to increase speed motivates the dog, but do that on a long leash. Do that on a long leash. Not yet, Joe, I haven't written any books. Do that on a long leash. Next. When correcting for breaking a known place command, do you hold the stim or is it momentary? I usually do momentary. Next. Um, trouble getting e collar on dog and crate to let out. Pause me, how to correct. So what you can do is you can have the dog come out and go into a sit. And if the dog paws you, you can actually you can actually bonk the dog. I mean, you know, this is the thing. To me, that's okay. It's a choice. It's a choice. And again, you know, if you're brand new to my show, you heard me talk about punishment a lot because again, people are asking me how to stop unwanted behaviors. You know, if you want me to teach you how to um, keep flops on the floor, that, that's a that, that's a choice. That's a choice the dog is making. I would take the leash on the dog, 
and hold the dog up, not hang the dog, but like hold the dog up. That dog is just being a snot. It's just being a, literally a, that's just, that's just bratty behavior. Thanks for all the super hearts, guys. That's just bratty behavior. So what do you do? Hoist the dog up. I'm not talking about hoisting it up on the, um, uh, like, like this, not hanging the dog, but it's like, knock it off. It's just like your kid having a temper tantrum on the floor. You grab its arm and you go stand up and walk. It's the same exact concept. Next. How do you bonk? It's a towel. And you would say no. And then you throw the towel at the dog. Yes. I'm, I'm telling people um, to throw a towel at a dog. And if you want to switch that around saying, oh, you're hitting your dog. That's your, that's your story. Go ahead. Cause a lot of people like to say, oh, Jeff says hit your dog. It's like, yeah, that's what I'm like telling people to do next. I'm worried I'm confusing my highly anxious dog because I'm not using the e-collar correctly. Um, you might not be, <clears throat> you know, and that's, that's, that would be why you probably want to do a, um, a Skype with me. So I don't do this to get Skype business, but you know, you're talking about a 15 second to 30 second answer to something that takes time to describe. Also, when I do my Skypes, I'm not talking so fast. So you might want to do a Skype. When I train dogs, I don't talk so fast. Next. Next. Hey, hold Sorry. There's nothing. You got a dog off medication last week with a bonker. Awesome. Every day my Yorkie male gets aggressive. Sometimes he bites. It happens only at nighttime. So it happens at nighttime. Your dog might be tired. Your dog might be exhausted. Your dog might be tired. Or between 6 and 9 o'clock p.m., a lot of dogs get to zoomies and your dog is more aroused. You know, yes, is my wife. Your dog is more aroused. And with arousal comes separation anxiety, um, jumping behavior, um, biting behavior. So your bonker is great for Yorkies because it's a smaller dog and you can use a cotton towel, it's rolled up and you will just say no and boom. The dog, your dog will never stop biting you until there's a punisher. It will never stop biting you until there's a punisher. So, you got to figure out what you have to figure out what's meaningful to your dog. What's meaningful to your dog? That's what you need to find out. That's what you need to find out. So, every dog is motivated by different punishers. I mean, some of my dogs are you give them a level six or level eight on a remote call that goes up to hundred. It's the end of the world. Some dogs blow through a hundred. Do you know what I mean? So it's not, it's and it's not the breed of the dog either. We have Jack Russells that are like, please f you, sixty. <laughs> And I got working line German Shepherds, like the two right next to me, which a level eight is like, oh my gosh, what did I do wrong? So, yeah, it's interesting. That's why you don't look at the numbers, you look at the dog. Always look at the dog in front of you. Next? Yep, next. Thanks again for all you give. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Should I not walk her until I get her used to environmental? She walks like she's never been out. Um, you can. I mean, it might be just you right now, Martha. It might be just your lack of um, control of the dog, which is not a dig at you. I don't shame owners at all, ever. Um, um, what you want to do, though, is I would do this. I would just walk. If you have a long driveway, if your driveway, um, if your driveway is is fifty feet, say, up and down your driveway, perfect the heel up and down your driveway. If you don't have a driveway, just go two houses down. Unless you live in the country and there's a mile between houses, just like literally just go like slowly down the street. Also slow down your walk, slow it down. Everyone's like walk faster and eh. walk slower. Like literally like walk slower. Can I always tell the, um, the ones with the little emojis at the end. Yeah, walk slower. Next. So all corrections are momentary? No, they're not. All depends on what level you're at and how high. Active God is continuous for three seconds. So getting into the trash, getting off of counters, eating cat poop, eating dog poop or any any animal poop, um, counter surfing, um, all of those are fence fighting. Those are all three second high level corrections. We do those. I talk about that very freely, very freely. Why? Your dog's going to die. So today, today, Christmas Day, Dogs got rushed to the hospital today, the ER, for ingesting something they shouldn't have, and they got rushed to the emergency room today. Today, humans got rushed to the hospital for being bit for the first time because the dog got something and the human tried to take it out, and it was a high-value item. It happens every holiday season. We see it. We see it on Thanksgiving. We see it on Christmas. And, you know, um, to me, it's about $3,000 to take something out of a dog. And or they could die, or they could die, because most of most of the dogs are not spitting stuff up. And for a bone, 
it's going to rip rip them apart inside rip them apart inside so next when do you tap instead of pressure on pressure off pressure on pressure off we do during the learning stages of remote power training the learning stages of remote power training so that's what we do next Hi, Jeff and Linda, wishing you and your family a happy and healthy Christmas oh, and New Year. Oh, Heather, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. Happy holidays to you. My dog got pancreatitis many years ago from hand-fed ham. Yep. And some ham he stole that we, yep. that we didn't know. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It happens. Yep. Yep. Oh, hey. Hey, Rabbi Glickman. How are you? Shalom. Shabbat shalom to you. Happy Hanukkah. No, bikey boy, I don't have a book. I don't have a book. Not yet. There'll be a book. I'm coming up with a uh, a paid channel though, so I'm coming up to with a um uh with a with a paid channel, and I'll be doing um that first. And I've got a, a great um uh, uh, I got three videos that are lined up, and I film um the third week of January. So I'm doing filming the third week of January, and um in about probably about two months I'll have it out. Why? That was the one. That wasn't real. There it is. We'll okay, okay, anyway. We'll stay in the driveway for a while then, for sure. I know I'm a green dog owner learning. So, so if you're a green dog owner, that's really, really cool. Um, so what you're going to do is, usually what we do is, anytime we, get, we do something for the first time or we're new at something, we make a lot of mistakes. The cool part about us making mistakes is we learn and we can fix them. That's the cool part. So if it was some genetic issue, so if it was some gen, if it was some genetic issue, you know, we're, we're, we're screwed. But if it's if you made the mistake, awesome. You can fix it. Next. Uh, da, da, da. Do you eat collar condition aggression from day one or just do foundation for a few days? Um, if it's okay. So the way we work with human aggression, if, human aggression, if the dog tries to bite us on day one, there has to be a punisher. There has to be. Like there, there's no time to build a relationship. We grab the leash. Um, the dog, um, the dog tries to bite us. So there has to be a punisher, right? Um, but normally, what we do is we do low pressure on the dog until the first couple of days before we add pressure on the dog. But and we don't expect, if it's a dog aggressive dog, you won't be around dogs for the first week until we're ready to do it. Next. Do you need a demo reactive dog for those videos? LMAO, mine would be perfect. Um, we are looking for a family in Providence to help with our DVD. So ideally a family with kids with an out of control dog that's making their wife miserable and we need them for four to five days of training, but it's gonna be in Providence or the surrounding areas. Um, and then somebody asked if I go to Boston or not, workshops in Boston. Boston is Rhode Island. So I've got one coming up in March. If you go to rvdogtrainer.com, rvdogtrainer.com. Boston's not Rhode Island. You know what I mean. From a seminar standpoint, from a seminar standpoint, you're 45 minutes away. Come to the seminar in Rhode Island. I don't do them in Boston. I'm not, not I'm, I'm open to do them in Boston, but I do them in Providence. We get a ton of people from Boston. We get people from up to 10 hours away that come back to come to the seminar. I just did a seminar in Denver. Somebody from Georgia drove to the Denver one. Pretty cool. The farthest is 36 hours. They drove all the way across Australia from Perth to, um, where was I? Cairns. Next. Nothing. Yeah, I don't, yeah, the veil, who, somebody answered that. What? The oh, common, common Sense did. Common Sense answered the male question. Yeah, I don't know about, I don't know about males. They'll probably get it checked out though in case of an infection. Yeah, there might be an infection. So they make some good spray antibiotic, but I don't know. Maybe there's an online form for that. It's probably not life or death. So what do we got? What do we got? Oh, lost a lot of blood. I was very worried. Did not know what to do. Yeah. You can always call your vet. You know, you can always call your vet. They'll, they should be helpful. You know, right now, a lot of them are just closed, but the emergency rooms are open. So a lot of, a lot of them are mature, so. How do you train two... Eight month GSD pups at the same time. Whoa, you got two you got two two eight month old puppies? Okay. It is what it is. Um, you don't train them at the same time, you train them by themselves. So you train them by themselves and then you put them together. So you train one dog at a time, one dog's in the crate, it has to be quiet in the crate, another dog comes out, it gets its training, then when you're done with that dog, you put that dog in the crate and then you bring it out. So then you bring it, you bring the other one out to the point where one dog can hold place while you're working the other dog, while you're working the other dog. So 
Um, well, that's how you train two dogs. You train them the same way we train dogs on our on our um, uh, in our training center. But if you own two puppies, you're going to be working your ass off to make sure you've got those two dogs working in sync, um, um, working in uh, working in sync together, um, because you want you want to make sure that those dogs are underneath voice control, under voice control. Next. Um. Been trying to desensitize dog to Dremel for nails. He's okay with Clipper, but insecure about Dremel. Yeah, Dremel we do all with food. It's all with food, and it's a process. There's some really good videos on YouTube. We don't have any on nail cutting, um, but you can use a Dremel. Sometimes the sound freaks them out. Um, I love using a Dremel, though. So, next. This chair hurts my butt. Yep. Um, we, I missed one. When is T3 in Rhode Island? Uh, it's, let's see, it's, it's in uh, California in February, and it's in June in Rhode Island. We haven't announced the official dates yet, but it'll be June in Rhode Island and then October in Rhode Island. So we're doing one in L.A. and then two in Rhode Island. We're doing three a year. Next. Um, could bonking high E collar for arousal make dog even more nervous before the walk? I guess it could. We're not seeing it, though. We're not seeing it. The only, the only information that I give out is stuff that we've done so many times. So we're not, you know, we, excuse me, my nose is a chin. We're not seeing that. All we're seeing is, all we're seeing is dogs do better. But you can punish wrong just like you can reward wrong. So many people, so many clicker trainers out there are just doing it all wrong. Their timing is terrible. So many clicker owners are doing it wrong. Food trainers are doing it wrong. So, I mean, you can mess up training, you know, but unless it's aggression, you don't really have much to worry about. Sorry, next. Mm -hmm. Oh, guys, let's get the questions. Oh, there's not a lot of people on tonight. It's a slow night. It is Christmas after all. Is it? That's okay. We got questions. We got answers. What else can I tell you? The kids got, uh, hey, Elizabeth, love you, hon. I'll see you in February. Can't wait. Um, let's see. The kids got... Uh, Dog does not look at me during walk, even with prong and remote. So, Bev, you can make your so you're just not you're just not um you're just not valuable to your dog <laughs> right now. Don't take it personally, but it's like you're just not valuable. Your dog just or your dog would rather look at other things. So it's like let's see, cars and pavement and trees and other dogs and squirrels. Like oh, that's way more important than my owner. You know, it's just the way it is. So um, it, it's just the way it is. So what you can do is you can do focus work. And you do that interior. So we use remote collars and food to do focus work. You can also use a clicker in food to use um, uh, uh, to use folk to do focus work. Next. Um, yeah, Angela was cute in his little his little house coat. Yeah. If you see up close, it's Minecraft. Yeah. Very cool. I know. Next. Um, and he's adorable in it. Um, always enjoy your scopes and your rapid fire style. Thanks, Joe. Next. So if we mess up aggression, they can get more aggressive. Yeah, they can. Yeah, you know, dog owners, put it this way, most dog trainers don't know how to rehab aggression. Truth. They don't. Most dog owners, like, why would you, so why would you know as a dog owner how to fix aggression? Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's a major thing to deal with. So, you know, can you make it worse? Yes, you could. Can you make a non-aggressive dog aggressive? Absolutely, because of bad timing. I've seen it over and over and over again. That's why, you know, you talk to somebody and there's enough, there's there's free advice out there that's good. There's free advice out there that sucks. There's paid advice out there that sucks. Um, but you gotta find somebody, you know, there, there's enough people out there that are doing great work that you can probably get information from them. You know, next. I'm trying to be so conservative with rewards now. I don't want to reward at the wrong time. Well, just do, you can do, just, you can do, um, you, you can, you just gotta be careful in your timing. All right, you got to be careful on your timing because, but you can start doing variable rewards. What's more important than your reward is the, is the, is, is the word yes and no. That's what's more important. Like you can say yes and not give a reward. Once your dog is trained, once your dog is trained, you can say yes and not give your dog a reward. If you say no, you always want to follow up with a punisher, but you can just start doing variable rewards. You'll be fine. Next. I want to have a dog to give me back a cookie from her mouth. Don't remember how. How rare is this? Um, you can do. We, we do that all the time with out. We do that with the out command. It's pretty impressive, though. So it's pretty impressive. Um, so next. Um, so much advice and hard to decide who is right, LOL. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a lot of ethical issues in the dog training world. There's a lot of false information in the dog training world. There's also a lot of ideology that's false. Somebody mentioned about like this force-free movement. There's no such thing as force-free dog training. It's impossible. It can't be done. 
It's a scam. It's a mark. It's a marketing thing. It sounds really good. It sounds good. Force free. That's a bunch of bullshit. It's a bunch of bullshit. You put a leash on a dog, you're using force. A cow on the dog, using force. You close the door to your house, you're using force. You put your dog in a crate, you're using force. Um, you know, everything is force. You make your dog wait for food, you're using force. Literally, with the hands off, wait to make your dog for food, you're using force. It's called pressure. So most people that like buy into that concept or teach that concept, it sounds good from a marketing standpoint, but they're lying to you. You're lying. They're lying to you. And it's unethical. It's unethical. So I have a problem with that because why it's leaving dog owners hanging and it's killing dogs. It's killing dogs. So, yeah, just like the guy that like I wanted to jump up on my show and brag that his penis was bigger than mine by saying that he rehabs dogs without aggressive dogs, without shock collars. Well, good for you. And they used to do that back in the days, too. They What did they do? They hung dogs. They beat dogs with rubber hoses. Like, congratulations. Make a DVD and save a couple million dogs' lives. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's a thing of like, you know, trolls are really, really funny. It's like, how old are these people? Like, what are they doing? Like, who does that? You know, next. Tips on transitioning dog from a house with a yard to a temporary apartment. Dog is mad and refusing to potty. Okay, dog's not mad. You're probably pissed off that the dog ain't potty when it's supposed to be. But the, but the, you know, the, the, but the dogs, yeah, Michael, you're right. 11, 11 or under. Put it this way. Angelo is five. He would never do that. Um, this is what you want to do. You have to teach a dog how to piss and shit on cement. Good luck with that one, right? So what you're going to do is this. It's easiest to do it first thing in the morning. So first thing in the morning when you're not rushed is dogs, you know, take your dog outside, go to one spot, go potty. It's going to be really confusing. It's going to be really, really confusing to do. Um, and then if the dog doesn't go to the bathroom, go back out in the house. If the dog goes to go to the bathroom, bring, you know, use, click or train your dog um, so it knows what a clicker is. You can click in food. Or I'll tell you what I do. Do this when nobody can see you. I'll take my dog outside. I, I don't have a problem with this because my dogs pee and poo on command. But what you can do is if you're in a rush, you go outside, go to a spot. You, if you're a dude, ladies, I'm a little bit harder for you. You pee on the ground and that gets the dog going. Trust me, it works. All right. Now, if you get arrested, uh, -uh you can't, you can't, don't, I got nothing to do with it. I got absolutely nothing to do with it. But your dogs have to get used to going to the bathroom on cement. It's challenging for dogs that are used to grass. Um, but there are odors. There are odors. No, Joe, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Joe, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. You didn't see that on one of my Instagram stories? You didn't see that on one of my Instagram stories? <laughs> Next. That's fantastic. What do we um, at what point do I go from teaching robo heel to correcting from moving ahead? When the dog is understanding remote cower heel to go back into um uh to go back into um into the right heel spot. Then what you would do is you would go you would go higher level to 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 punish getting ahead of you. Next. This is not flowing. It's okay, we're getting there. Um we went to our first dog friendly. Happy hour, and my dog made great decisions thanks to your videos. Awesome. Super proud of you. Just for a warning, watch out for other dogs. Most people are probably not as dog savvy as you, so watch out. But awesome that you did it. Advocate for your dog. So proud of you. Um, uh, and document your work as well, even if you're a dog owner, just to show people how, you, how your dog can start making these great choices. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Next. Renee said, Linda, that is your husband giving that advice. I learned it from her. Okay, see what I have to deal with, Renee? See what I have to deal with? Can I get a Chihuahua to go number two outside when it is 10 degrees, cries when that Oh, uh, So we own two Chihuahuas. They learned how to go to the bathroom in February in New England. So yes, it's possible. January and February. Yes, right. Yes, it's possible. So. Um, I just leave them outside until they do it. Yeah, next. And sometimes they go. Oh, look at Joe! Put the dog, put the dog in the in the tub to do number two. Huh? You know that's not a bad idea. It's a tiny little dog. You could do that. Next. Um. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, 
Uh, oh, how do I get my Jack Russell to stop picking fights with Rack? Okay, games? we're gonna get we we got who who asked that question? I don't know. It's um, oh, here it is. Here it is. Lido shuffle. Lido shuffle. We're gonna to want to do that like ASAP. Number one, raccoons have rabies. Number two, your dog, um, um, uh, your your dog could lose an eye. It can get injured, and it can cost you money. Um, so yeah. So what you want to do is this: is Lido shuffle. You're brand new to my show. Um, I'm pretty sure I've had thousands of people on my show, but I don't know if I've recognized you. So thank you so much for joining us. I, uh, remote cower, remote cower training, and what you're gonna do. Is I mean you got a Jack Russell, they're a terrier breed, and they're going to want to they they do that they they go after they go after rodents. Um, um, and actually Jack Russell can probably kill a um, a, a, a raccoon, but we don't want to see that cage match at all. Nobody's buying tickets. Nobody's doing one. He's killed one exactly. Oh. I know. I know. So what we're going to do is this: remote collar on the dog, long line on the dog. When your dog goes after a raccoon, you have to make it suck. The only way you're going to stop. An unwanted behavior such as this, but you've got to make that behavior suck. So if you're brand new to my show and you're against electronics or you're against punishments, you're going to struggle with that. Um, uh, the other concept is reward not doing it, which, you know, which don't make sense to me, which don't make sense to me. Um, so what you're going to do is dog on a long line. When the dog starts chasing any rodents, any rodent, um, you're going to have to give it a high level correction to make it suck. So we try to watch it in the backyard. I know. I know. So that's what you're gonna have to do, and, or you know, and you got to be out there for a little bit, um, and you're going to just punish the dog at a high level. It's with a remote collar. Is it uncomfortable? Absolutely. But the last thing you need to do is, um, I mean, you know, that's why you jumped on my show is to find out about that. That's how we stop dogs from chasing squirrels and rabbits and skunks and deer and, in your case, raccoons. And it works. And it works. Next. Mm. That's it. I don't know. Uh, thoughts on the pit bulls in the news that mauled their owner? Um, so those weren't pit bulls, just to let you know. Um, I don't know if I've made a public comment on that. Um, they weren't pit, so they weren't pit bulls at all. Um, they were large power breed dogs. Um, I don't know the whole story. I don't. I don't know the whole story. I just don't know. I don't know. Um, but let's. You know, this. This is the thing. If you're not familiar with it. Two dogs, they found two dogs um, with their owner dead, eating their owner, um, eating their owner. Um, but uh, we don't know the whole story. But what I like to tell people is this. How many people in 2017 were not killed by their dogs? Look at it that way. How many people in 2017 were not killed by their dogs? That's my story. That's my story. So um, I have not enough information on that at all. I have not enough information on that at all to make a comment because, you know, we might not be doing it. Next. Um, do you use remote collar to correct aggression? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Remote collars are fantastic tools. It's not just for aggression. It's for all off-leash and on-leash behavior. It's a fantastic tool. We rehabilitate a ton of aggressive dogs. So it's a wonderful communication device to the dog that lets them know thinking about being aggressive and being aggressive is a wrong choice. So that's one of the things we do. But 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 rehabbing um, uh, rehabbing aggression though is a um, it's a very um, multi multi layered process. So it's not just just the remote just the re, um, uh, just the the remote cower part. Next. Um. Dog resource. Whoops. I don't know where I am. Uh, There's one about resource right, guarding the, something. Use that one first. Dog resource guards food and objects from our cat. Long line and e collar correct for that. Too. Um, I would actually get rid of it. I would actually correct the cat. I would correct the cat because if you don't correct the cat, do you want the cat to steal dog food and steal dog toys? Believe it or not, I would actually correct the cat. So I've got to think about resource guarding. We fix resource guarding in three seconds with a remote collar. Absolutely. Um, just like we fix jumping um, as well in three seconds. But I would suggest you feed your dog in a crate. Um, I would suggest you feed your dog in the crate because um, then your dog cat can't steal your, 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 the dog food. But um, if your dog growled at your cat for coming by its food, I actually wouldn't um, um, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't correct it. Next. Um, counter surfing and jumping over baby Kate's say, give act of God correction yep. and say no, or just correct. You can just do, you can just correct because the counter surfing, you're probably not going to see. So I want the act. I want the act of jumping up on the counter to suck. Counter surfing is a big thing. Dogs die. Dogs die from counter surfing. They, 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 they die from counter surfing. So and jumping over baby gates, same thing. Same thing. Next. Um, do you take medical questions too or just training? I'm just a dog trainer. I'm a dog trainer. So I don't take any medical questions and vets should not take dog training questions because they don't know anything about dog training. Um, even a veterinary behaviorist doesn't know anything about dog training. So um, I only do, um, it would be unethical um, and I wouldn't know medical question at all. I wouldn't know. But there's some, um, I would go on to like, I'd go online first, snoop around or talk to your vet. Next. Uh, no, that's not me and the poster on the wall. No, it's not. That's an old poster too. That was a that was a, a fetish night in um, London. Next. Nothing. Oh, really? Huh. Stop The raccoons want to know how to, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, the raccoons are always like, how do we stay away from that Jack Russell? It's trying to kill us. Yeah. Almost every story I read about dogs attacking owners involved heavy drinking. Do dogs avert alcohol? Um, you know, I'll tell you what. I have owned dogs that really hated um, anybody that smelled like alcohol and smelled like pot. So, you know, again, I don't want to go down this 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 rabbit hole about this one story because I don't know enough about it, and I don't know if any of us know enough about it. And there's going to be a lot of hearsay, um, um, and it's also not dog training. It's also not dog training. And it, even if you read an article, it could yeah. be true or not. Trust me, guys. I've been in the news many times. And um, there we go. My chihuahua watches TV and barks angrily at animals on the TV. So, so Kilroy, you're not alone. Um, a lot of dogs do that. Um, a lot of dogs do that. And what I would do is um, use a punisher. Remember, whenever you want to stop something, punishment. Whenever you want something, reward. But you don't reward the dog for not barking at the TV. Um, because without having a punisher. So what I would do is use a bonker. So I own two chihuahuas as well. And a bonker, all a bonker is, is a wrapped up towel, wrapped up towel, well, secured with elastics, rubber bands, depending where in the world you live. And then um, you would say no, and you would throw the towel, right? Um, you would throw the towel. And the dog, the dog would go, it would startle the heck out of the dog. It won't hurt the dog. It's a towel. Um, uh, and then what I would do is you're done. You're done. And the dog will learn. Remember, if you haven't told the dog to not do something in a way the dog understands, they won't do it. They won't do it. You know, you can tell them to be quiet in the moment. They might stop, but then they'll start again. Next. You're so helpful. I've always been so confused about dog training. Oh, well, bikey boy. Cool. Thank you. You've been, on, you've been on a lot of my periscopes lately, but you've been asking some good questions. So I appreciate your questioning. I appreciate your questions. Because, um, like, without folks like you and everybody else um, on here, I can't give answers. Next. Hmm. Beagle killed baby rabbits and brought them inside to give us. Do I correct that? Uh, I wouldn't. So, me, personally, I would not. Isn't it already a done deal? It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, that's normal. Um, that's normal. <laughs> that's normal animal behavior. Well, then again, so is chasing, you know, chasing a lot of animals. Um, what's done is done. It's too late. You missed it. Now, if your dog was chasing a rabbit and you don't want your dog to chase a rabbit, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Next. Uh, I currently have a rescue chihuahua and it is a demon. Yeah. So all dogs are rescue dogs. I always throw that out there because I don't want people to use rescue as a, as a, is an emotional is an emotional trigger not to use reward or punishment, especially punishment on their dog. Um, the cool thing is this: your your chihuahua can be straightened out in a week or less. Now, all right, in a week in in a week in a week or less. So um, that's that. Next. Um, do you do your dogs greet people or vice versa at your seminar? No, my dogs ignore humans. I've trained my dogs to ignore humans. That doesn't mean they won't go up to you. But they're, they're, at the seminars, they're in my RV. So I, my dog, when I travel to seminars, they're in my RV, and they stay in my RV. Obviously, I run them in between you know, breaks and stuff like that. I run them in the morning. I run them at night. But my, my, my guys are, um, um, you know, my, my guys are pretty, they're really social, but I just, they just don't meet people. They don't have much of an interest in other humans. You know, they're social, but 
I'm everything to them, and that's the way I want it. And that's what I want out of every else, other, everybody else's dog. I want you guys to be the center of your dog's universe. I want you to be everything to your dog. That's why I'm so strict on a lot of like the public access stuff where like I don't want your dogs meeting other people you know, on the walks or anything like that. Next. Is it a myth that you have to catch the dog in the act to correct them for to understand? Well, your 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 no has to be well timed. The punisher can follow, but the no has to be well timed. So if I came home from work and say my dogs I saw a pile of shit on the carpeting and my dog came up to greet me and I said no and punished them, I'm punishing them for coming up and greeting me. So you know, if I, if I, you know, if, if, if somebody told me that, you know, oh, honey, the dogs were barking out the front window today when you were at work. And then I went up to them and I, and I punished them. That's to me, that's really mean. And it doesn't make sense. And um, so, yes, the word no has to be, um, the word no um, has to be at the time that you want to punish, but the punisher can be after. Same thing with yes. The word yes, I mean, think about clicker training, you know, the word yes has to be at the time you did something right, but the reward can follow as well. Next. I've concluded Jack Russell's actually think they are bigger than they actually are. Well, Jack Russell's are just, I mean, keep Jack Russell's are, I mean, they kill. <clears throat> just think about what they're bred to do. Just, just you know, do a little bit of a Google search on a, um, on a Jack Russell, and um, <clears throat> which I'm sure you probably have. So. I'm getting tired. Um, okay, keep going. Okay. Um, old dogs have freedom in house. Young dogs place thoughts all crates when gone. Yep. Sounds good to me. Young dogs don't have the privileges. So young dog doesn't get the privileges as much as someone else. So your older dogs, they've earned the right to, they've earned the right for more freedom. Your younger dogs does not. Next. It's not going to Okay. We'll get there. Um, dog gives little to no signs before she lunges at people, having a hard time timing a correction. Um, there's always a sign. There's always a sign. So number one, keep a muzzle on your dog if your dog is lunging at people. Um, keep a leash on your dog if your dog is lunging at people. There's always a body change. There's an energy change um, and there's a body change. There's an energy change and there's a body change. Is that is that the Megan that we know? Megan, are you coming to my seminar? Are you coming to the Baltimore seminar? Um, um, so this dude is unemployed back. Actually, my credit is cusping on the um, Brady asshole. Ironic, your name is Brady asshole. asshole. So I'm actually not unemployed. I actually own a multi-million dollar business. And my credit score is right on the cusp of very good. So I'm getting up there, which if for all you folks don't know, it's at 740. So I'm really getting close. So I'm employed and I got good credit. All right, next. It's really hard for me to not tell people to eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did I just say that? Next. Um, next. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if a shy dog isn't introduced to new people, Okay, so if a shy dog is not introduced to new people, we'll become better. Listen, th this is the thing. Bring uh, the, the th this is the thing. Existence is everything. Existence is everything. Get your dog around lots of people. It doesn't necessarily have to meet people. Get your dog around lots of people. I'm not saying lock your dogs up. I'm not saying don't be around people. I'm saying is having people come up to your dog. And petting them isn't like think about you if you've got social anxiety. Now, there's a cool game you can play, which is like go greet somebody. Um, is to is to is uh, is to go is to go greet somebody. Um, and then that's all done with usually a clicker. But first you use a target for that, you use a target for that, and a clicker and food for that. That you can do, and that helps um um uh, uh, increase the dog's confidence. Blake Rodriguez shows that. My buddy Blake Rodriguez at Dream Come True Canine Training in New York City. He shows that a lot on a lot of his Instagram lives. He shows um, this concept of sending a dog to somebody and sending a dog to a target. Next. Um, he 
People say my dog is a snob because she doesn't care about people. Good. Then you have a snobby dog. And guess what? I got a bunch of snobby dogs and I'm proud. Next. Uh, you know our other dog's aggression issues and I'm trying to avoid those issues with our other dog. Yeah. You know, so. It gives me a lot of anxiety well, thinking about it. Yep. Well, then, then Megan, what you want to do is just don't. So this is the thing. Don't let that anxiety keep you from moving forward. Keep you from moving forward. Um, lots of rules, lots of boundaries, lots of yes, lots of no, nothing in between. Lots of structure, lots of structure. So, and I get it though. It's, it's, I have so much empathy for people. Um, I have so much empathy for people. And this is the thing. You get a lot of people out there that are like, you know, shock collars are bad and prong collars are bad. It's like, these are folks that have never walked in your footsteps. They've never walked in your footsteps. They'll never take the, um, um, they'll never, they'll never take, um, the leash of these dogs. Um, and they don't know what you're struggling with. They have no empathy for people that are struggling with dogs. So, you know, I get it. I get it. And you're not alone. You're not alone. Next. How good are whippets as a family pet? I don't know. I think it's not as, it's not as much as the breed of the dog as the family. Does that make sense? So we like you just might not be the right family for a whippet or a German Shepherd, or you might not be the right family for a high drive dog, or you might not be the right. It's I think it's more than just the breed of the dog. It's absolutely more than the breed of the dog. I think the family dynamic, the knowledge of dog training, the activity level of the family, um, that is way more important. Um, that's way more than way way more important than I think the breed right now. Next. At first, I had him ignore people, but now that he behaves, I'm trying to get him to help me meet people. That's fine. You can do that, but just remember, most people don't know how to meet dogs. So this concept of stick your hand out and like, oh, my God, you're so pretty. That's the best way to get bit. That is the best way to get bit. So you can have be around people. And just have people stand there if the dog comes up to them. But I've seen so many people greet dogs wrong that it startles the heck out of dogs. It puts the dog on the, the person can get bit as well. So there's a pro, there's a proper way to do it. There's a proper way to do it. And I'm not seeing that many people do it. So that's why I'm such a big advocate of, you know, you know, um, uh, 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 a big advocate of um, existence. Next. When is your Long Island seminar? Uh, I don't even know off the top of my head. Go to rvdogtrainer.com. rvdogtrainer.com. Um, no. Okay. Um, Megan says, might bring my shy dog instead. Yeah, bring the shy dog, Megan. Yeah, we'll have fun. We'll have a good time. Next. Um, how many dogs do you have? Um, right now I'm down to eight. Next. Um, I hate people stalking my dog to pet her. I'm constantly having to tell people no, no, no. So as a, as, as, as a female, I think you're a female. Is that Renee? It's Renee. Renee. As a female, right, um, what I would do is I would literally turn to them and I would, I would say to them really firmly, fuck off. Back off. Right now. Move back. Get out of my space. And I'm serious. And I'm serious. This, this, this whole concept of like, like, no, like, like, no. hold on. You blow my <clears throat> ear out. Sorry. This is what, this is one of my pet peeves. Ladies, right? ladies and men, boundary issues. All I know is that I was raised where no means no, no means no. Ladies, there's a lot of females out there. And this is not a sexist thing. This is just the way it is. Because I, you know, all my colleagues, including my female trainers, will say the same thing about our clients. So many of our clients are telling people, historically females, that want to pet dogs, no, don't pet my dog. The dog owner is saying no. The person that wants to pet the dog doesn't listen and goes in and still pets the dog, even after friendly knows and rude knows. Whatever happened to, whatever happened to no means no, like right? whatever happened to boundaries, whatever happened to respect for personal space, I'm blown away. I am blown away. It's so rude. Next. So much great advice. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. How to stop a male dog from humping or is getting them fixed the only way? Oh, getting them fixed won't fix it at all. Every humping dog we've worked with has been desexed. Dressage whip on, you take get a dressage whip or a remote collar or a bonker, a punisher, you know, 
or a punisher. And you give him a quick swat on the ass. You say no and you bonk him. When he's a remote collar, you say no and you, you, you punish. The only way a dog will stop humping is through punishment. We do it. Yeah, we don't allow humping on our property at all. So having, yeah, females hump as well. So, um, okay. So um, that's what you do next. You find that I'm a dog? No, but you hump. Next. Um, how do you teach boundaries in personal space? Dog climbs on anyone on floor, etc. How do you teach? So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can be, you can do, you can do, be proactive. You can be proactive by doing place like so. It's technically, theoretically, right now, see these two dogs right there. <coughs> Bless you. So they, if I was on the ground, they couldn't get on me because they're in place. Or you can teach the out command. The out command is not just for removing balls out of your mouth or a toy or a bite sleeve or a tug. Or, or something they're not supposed to pick up. It's also used for literally get out of here. It means get out of here. So what you're going to do is um, you would say you with a leash, with a leash, um, have the, if a dog climbs on somebody, you would say out. There's a correction. If you want to just use a leash pop, you can use a leash pop, and you guide the dog away from the person. You do that. So out is a punisher. Excuse me. It would be a punisher. Next. June 9th and 10th is Long Island. Uh, excuse me. You know, right? I know. June 9th, I'm sucking in a lot of air, and it's coming out as a burp. Next. Um, we had a retired greyhound and loved the dog. She was the best dog we ever had. Yeah, we get a lot of greyhounds up here. Not as many as we used to. We have a, we have a, a racetrack um, down the street from us, but it's been closed for a long time. So I don't know how many how much, how many dogs are greyhound rescue. Or there's still a greyhound rescue, and they get a lot of dogs from all over the place because there still are racetracks all over the, all over the country. Linda, you have the patience of a saint. <laughs> if they only knew, just remember, everything you see on social media is not real. I'll always remember that. <laughs> what else do we got? That's it. What time is it? 8.50? We've been on for an hour, right? Mm -hmm. Have we been on for an hour? Mm -hmm. What do we got here? What time? All right, everybody. Christmas edition. What would Jeff do? Time to go. Kids are downstairs. Go play some video games. We got we, we got we got the kids a um what's it called? It's a Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch. What's Angela doing? Angela was kicking his sister's ass in video games right now. So so all right everybody. So I want to I want to thank everybody. Um, we're still going to be on one more time before the end of the year, so don't worry about it. But I want to thank everybody. You've made um, uh, uh, 2017 fantastic. Um, oh, thanks for the super hearts. Um, I, I care about all of you so much. I truly, truly care. I treasure the conversation. I treasure, um, I treasure everybody, even the trolls. I treasure you guys. Um, everybody, you're all fantastic. You're doing a great job. You guys are killing it with your dog training skills. You're killing it. Um, um, oh, there's Angelo. Angelo, Angela. say hello and say goodbye. We're about to tune off. Hello, goodbye. Got anything to say? What were you doing downstairs? Did you beat your sisters in the games? Oh, uh, I didn't play for that long. When you played, though, I heard you beat um, Clover and Romy one time each. Yeah, but that kind of wasn't that fun. Oh, okay. We lost a couple of times. That's okay. Winning is fun. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Take care, and um, we'll talk to you soon. In about a week. Before well, One more time before the end of 2017. I guess that would be New Year's Eve. Maybe we'll do it on two days before New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So Sunday night. We'll see everybody Sunday night. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.